the size to see quantum mechanical effects is equal to h divided by mv, where m is the mass and v is the velocity. So you take anything. You could take a ball, right? Or you could take this, uh, this water container. So you, can, you could see interference of water bottles jumping in and out of reality if you could measure things at a scale defined by h divided by m multiplied by v. But if you do it for something like a water bottle, you're going to end up with a number that's something like 10 to the minus 34. We can't see at that scale. So you can only see quantum, the quantum mechanical world if you have a device that can measure with this length scale. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a ball thrown at, I don't know, 50, uh, 50 meters per second. Okay? And the ball weighs one kilo, uh, weighs, I don't know, 0.1 kilograms. <laughs> then the size to see quantum mechanical effects in other words, interference, diffraction, anything to do with waves, the size that we're looking for will be 6.6 .6 times by 10 to the minus 34 divided by uh, 0.1 multiplied by 50, which still ends up at something like 10 to the minus, um, well, this is uh, 0.1 times 50, that's 5. So we still have round about um, 10 to the minus 34 meters. So there is a finite probability of a person being on the other side of that door and then becoming a wave, slipping under the door, and then reappearing on this side of the door. That's not impossible. It's just to see it, you'd have to be able to see things down to this scale. And we're not able to do that. But if you take something like an electron, and you do the same formula, so let's say we have an electron, at a velocity of about, let's say, one-tenth the speed of light, which is about 3 times by 10 to the 7 meters per second. And we know that an electron has a mass. The mass of an electron is about 10 to the minus 30 kilograms. So if we take that mass and that velocity and plug it into here, let's see what we get. So now we get size to C quantum mechanics is equal to 6.6 .6 times by 10 to the minus 34 divided by uh, 10 to the minus 30 multiplied by 10 to the 7, roughly. Okay, which gives us something like 10 to the minus 11. And this is about the size of an atom. Or maybe it's about 100 times bigger. But you're getting in the ballpark. You're getting to that size where you can see quantum mechanical effects. So we, never, we could never see quantum mechanics because we were not able to measure down to this scale until recently, until the 20th century. So it's a question of precision. Most, a lot of science has done exactly the same thing. Astronomy. Why can we see so many exoplanets? Because we have much more precise optics. All, a lot of, I mean, lots of sciences in the 20th century, basically the 20th century, 21st century, it's pretty much all about precision. We can measure things so precisely now. We can measure the, the gravity, uh, we were able to measure the changes in the gravity around the Earth to show that the place where the asteroid hit and wiped out the dinosaurs. We can measure things incredibly accurately, and that's basically how science is progressing. I mean, computers are a good example there. Okay, I want to, yeah, I want to clarify something. Yeah.
we cannot describe the atomic world with classical physics. And I need to separate the two worlds. So 